What's going on, all you YouTube and Facebook fishing freaks? Appreciate you guys joining us for another episode of On Another Line. Today, we're going to talk about some screenshots I took this past weekend of on my Solix 15 units. Pretty cool stuff. But we're going to talk about gear ratios this week and talk about uh, basically what they are. What the heck are they? Um, how should I, why should I care? Uh, how I pair different gear ratios with different techniques, etc. That will be coming up in just a second without this short delay with my short intro. We'll see you guys right back in just a second. You gotta get your own way up in a cast and set the hook on small mouth bass and then you'll understand. You gotta get your hands on a Shimano reel. Energy lumens right up at you like what you feel. Step on the deck, give it a whirl. Hello and welcome to my world. What is going on, everybody? Thanks for joining. What's up, Andrew Six? How you doing, buddy? Them Wayne boys in the house already. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are getting out there and leaning on them. So, again, without further ado, guys, we're going to have a short episode today. I'm here in my Texas tuxedo, this white t-shirt, because uh, I didn't feel like putting on anything else, to be honest with you. I wear a white t-shirt under every polo or everything that I wear for, to work. We just, Misty and I just got back from getting something to eat, and I just sat down and started doing the show. So, without further ado, what we're going to talk about today is going to be gear ratios, but I'm going to show you guys some really cool pictures that I've found uh, over the last few weeks here fishing. Uh, using my uh, Hummingbird Solix 15, which is pretty cool, man. Like the screenshot feature on a Solix is, is amazing. I'm sure there's others that do it. I don't know if the Helix does it or whatever, but the screenshot feature is really daggone cool. What's up, Chris? How you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining in. Um, but I'm going to show you guys here some really cool stuff that I have um, recently found. And again, this is uh, this is fishing stuff, obviously. Fishing related, anyhow. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm just now getting into the idea of using my uh, graphs a little better um, because it does take some time to get used to how they work um, because I've never had anything that nice, to be honest with you. Uh, and again, I'm sure you guys know this, but I have uh, two Garmin, or I'm sorry, two uh, Hummingbird Solix. 15s on my boat, which uh, have been an extreme game changer for me. Let me uh, grab these photos here, and I will show you what I'm talking about. Uh, first, let's pull it up here. First one. Anybody lose a kayak? Just posted this on social media a second ago. Um, pretty daggone cool. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see my uh, cursor or not, but you can see right there on the left-hand side, just to the right of the power 13.1 volts, there's a kayak there. Um, about 25 feet away from my boat in 20 foot of water. Pretty daggone cool there. Now, this is um, pretty daggone cool. I have I came across this little uh, brush pile. And this is actually in Gimlet Creek in Grayson this past weekend. You can see the water temperature, 48 degrees. Um, you can see that this is a brush pile that I came across. And I saw that there was some fish holding on it. I actually had my, uh, my sensitivity turned up too much, I think. That's why I'm getting all this noise to the left-hand side. Some of these are fish. Some of these are bait fish. Uh, but, on, you know, the cool thing about, you know, I'm learning as I go, guys. But if you press and hold on the screen on a uh, Solix and you press the zoom in button, it'll give you this feature here. It'll zoom in the pixels and show you what that is. But if you guys don't, if you guys can't tell the difference there, that's definitely a uh, crappie there. Let's see if I can't make this full screen so you guys can see it a little better. There we go. So definitely a crappie in my opinion, kind of looks very, very crappie ish. If it's around a brush pile and looks like a crappie, probably a crappie. Um, that was one. Um, this was another pretty cool one that I found. Again, same lake, same body of water. This is uh, Grayson. 
but you can see that this uh, at the very top here, guys. If you, I'm sure you know, but this is down scan uh, at the top and side scan on the bottom. And the reason the side scan down here is a little wonky is that I was using the transducer on my trolling motor to actually pick up this data. So every time you hit the trolling motor, it gives a little bit of a feedback because of the vibration. That's why you see those little lines there. But the top view here, you can see that that is a, a root ball of a tree that has fallen in the water. And it was actually going up the bank, but it was off the bank uh, about 10 feet. So you can actually see the shadow going down there, which is pretty cool. I uh, have some fish there, this big mark here at the bottom, probably a catfish or something bigger. Um, but I did find some fish there, which is really pretty cool. Uh, this one was actually at Greenbow the other day when I was there on President's Day last Monday. Uh, you can see, I assume this is probably a school of crappie right above a brush pile here. They're stationed somewhere about the 10-foot range, which is pretty cool. They're all balled up there. And again, I do believe I had this, the um, sensitivity turned up too high. That's why you get all this noise here. But it also will show you the thermocline in the water, which is really handy sometimes. So the thermocline means where the water temperature changes. There's normally a warmer section and a cooler section, and it kind of flip-flops depending on what time of the year is. But those are pretty cool there. And just some things that I've, I've seen over the past few, few weeks that are actually really pretty cool. What's up, Larry? How you doing? No, man, I wish I did have live scope. Um, I want to stick with hummingbird stuff. I believe their their side scan and down scan are better than anybody's on the planet. And obviously they're 360 because they're basically the only one that has it. But their forward-facing sonar or their live scope, if you will, is lacking a lot. And I'm hoping the new version that comes out, it's got to be soon and probably sometime this summer, um, boosts it up a little bit because I just don't feel like that it's all there. Um, I just don't want to put a Garmin graph up there with my 15-inch Solix. I want everything to be able to uh, connect and talk and have that one boat network going on, but I wish I did. Hey, Chris, no problem, man. Um, I will uh, check it out. I'll, I'll do that for you, man. I, I would love to. I'm learning right now. As soon as I learn a lot better about it, I'll definitely make a video for you. Um, might be trout. You're right. Uh, could be. Uh, but uh, I just think it's pretty cool that, you know, I didn't have this opportunity to find these fish with my graphs before I had a six inch graph. It was literally this big on the front and back of my boat. So I literally upgraded those things, you know, a lot. It's crazy. Um, but that is, you know, I'm, I'm still getting into it. Still like it. It's pretty daggone cool. Um, green bow. I didn't catch a fish. Grayson the other day, I caught one seven inch fish. So if you were wondering uh, on the, where I went fishing this weekend, it was Grayson uh, water temp, as you saw on those screenshots of the Solix, was about 48 degrees, 51 was the highest I saw it. Uh, super muddy. I look for it to clear up a little bit this weekend. I hope it does. We'll have to find out. Um, so let's talk about the meat and potatoes of what we're going to be talking about today, and that is gear ratios. What the absolute heck are they? Why should I care? Why should you care? and how you should choose which reel you use for each technique. So if we get down to, again, the, the very bare bones over to the meat and potatoes of what a gear ratio is, a gear ratio is obviously um, when you turn the handle of a reel 360 degrees or one rotation, the gear ratio is how many times the rotor on a spinning reel or the spool spins for every one time you crank that handle. Now, when you think about this, let's say that let's look at a PG, like a power gear reel from Shimano or something like that. Uh, PG is normally like 5.5 to 1. Now, what that means is, is that means when you crank that handle 360 degrees, that spool is going to turn five and a half rotations in that same time that it takes you to move that one full 360 degree rotation on the handle. Now, this can be changed by you, the user, and I want you to understand that. Uh, the big, there was a big thing for a while, a few years ago, that people were buying these really big, god-awful handles from China that were, like, skeletonized, and they made your, light, your, uh, your reel a lot lighter and all that stuff. But the length of your handle does take into consideration as to that ratio. If you make it longer or shorter, it is going to change the circumference or the, or the, I guess, the diameter of that circle that you're actually making. So 
it's going to take longer to get back to that same point. So it's going to uh, change the gear ratio. Uh, so we're going to be looking at just the basic gear ratios that come on reels right now. Uh, and that's, there's a ton of them. I thought I saw, did I not see you guys out there? I saw somebody in a Ranger and I could have swore Larry Slack was in the passenger seat going up, up brewing on Sunday. But again, gear ratios. Again, the ratio of a reel is how many times the the spool or the rotor on a spinning reel spins around this the and picks up line for every 360 degrees that you uh, rotate the, the handle of the reel. Now there's very there's a ton of different ones in the casting or the bait casting lineup, but there's not a ton in the spinning reel. Um, we're going to talk about why I choose what reels I do in just a second. So. If you look at Shimano, I, I'm going to talk about Shimano because I'm really familiar with their powers and stuff because it's what I fish. Um, but Shimano is kind of one of the hardest ones to read, in my opinion, because they have they have gear ratios, but they're not given in the name of the reel. They're given or denoted by two letters after the, the real name. For example, um, a 200 Corrado PG would be a power gear which is going to be a five, some kind of five gear ratio. What that means is that when, every time that you turn that handle 360 degrees or one rotation, it's going to turn that spool five or five and a half rotations for every time you turn that. So that's going to be a really slow gear ratio. That's going to mean that. So let's talk about really quick before I go any further. IPT or IP, let's see. So it'd be inches per crank or inches per turn. So IPT inches per crank this is the amount of line that's getting brought into your reel for every time you take that um reel handle 360 degrees whether it be a spinning rod or a spinning reel or a bait casting reel now inches per turn is going to change exponentially given the higher gear ratios you go for example a 5.5 to 1 gear ratio is going to take in less line than a 10 to 1 gear ratio that abu has and so that is one major aspect when it comes to reels and it comes to the gear ratio and how you should choose the gear ratios that you're actually looking for now when you're talking about different ones so let's look at there so ones that i know of are going to be like five gear ratio that's the power gear from shimano um the hg is going to be like high gear ratio um, normally if you have like a 200, like if it's a Corrado 200 and it doesn't say anything after that, it's going to be a six gear ratio. If you have a Corrado 200, um, HG is going to be high gear ratio. That's going to be a seven gear ratio, seven point something to one. And then if you have an XG, that is an extra high gear normally in the eight range. And again, there are some that are in nines, depending on what you're looking at. I think high, the highest that Shimano goes is eight. Uh, I know Abu has the Abu Garcia. I think it's the beast. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but I think it's a 10 to one gear ratio. Um, some of the like um, uh, 13 fishing stuff has nine gear ratios and stuff like that. Literally there's, you know, a hundred different options and there is a main advantage to having those gear ratios set up different techniques. In my opinion, I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. What's up, Jacob? You are probably 100% correct. I know it's five something. It all depends on, I think it all depends on what reel you have also. I'm thinking it only, the, so the PG, I think only comes in a Corrado. Not lying, you know, I'm, I'm probably lying when I say that. But anyway, thank you for that. That's it. The Revo Rocket is a 10 gear ratio. So let's break this down. PG, why would I use a slower bait casting reel or a faster? So if I'm looking for PG or something in the six gear ratio, some you know, PG is going to be five gear ratio to one, and then you're going to have something like a six gear ratio and a seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'm sure there's probably some out there. 
uh, in the like in the you know Japanese domestic market that are probably way more than that. But I pair my reels up in the following way with gear ratios. The slowest one, whether that be a PG or a six gear ratio, this is going to be stuff for um, that I'm going to be throwing deep, low, and slow. Now, I want to talk about that for a second because there's a lot of different things that you could be doing with that really slower reel. You know, it's a, some, you know I'm, I'm going to go with like a low gear ratio, something with a 5.1 to 1 or 5.0 to 1, all the way up to like a 6 four to one i'm going to consider those fairly slow they're not the six is not super slow but we're just going to throw all these and categorize these in there uh as you know as i see fit and you know let's denote it this way let's do like a slow gear ratio i'm going to say is a five to a six gear ratio we'll throw a six to a seven in the medium and then we'll go to seven to higher in a high speed gear ratio um, the low gear ratio, again, that's going to be a five to six, in my opinion, maybe a 6.5 to one. Uh, I'm going to be throwing big crankbaits, really deep crankbaits, big swim baits. Uh, if I'm throwing like a three quarter ounce to a one ounce spinner bait, something I'm slow rolling on the bottom and trying to get down there deep. If I'm fishing really cold water, I'm going to lower my gear ratio down because in my opinion, I believe that bass um, one, it takes less effort for the bass to come up and eat the, the, the bait fish that you're trying to mimic. It also looks less intimidating. If something goes whizzing by a bass's head and the water temperature is like 40 degrees, they're going to know that that is not, um, really, it's not realistic. Uh, because a lot of times when the water's that cold, their metabolism is going to slow down. So it's going to cause fish in the natural setting to actually move a little slower. So when you have that gear ratio set up there as that low gear ratio, and I'm throwing deep crankbaits, I'm, so, I'm talking about like a 5, 6XD. Uh, if I'm throwing like, uh, I'll even throw a blade bait on a slow gear ratio, depending on what kind of blade bait I'm throwing and where I'm throwing it at. Big swim baits. Uh, I did order some of the 8-inch, and I was watching the video last week about that, and I was trying to show you guys that that, that um, Kitech makes an eight inch swim bait and I, for some reason, didn't have the right tab pulled up. So you guys were like, what is he talking about? Cause I can't see crap. So I apologize for that. Um, but they have an eight inch swim bait, uh, in that easy shiner. I bought some of them just to say that I have them. Will I ever throw them? I don't know, but I do have them. Well, I will have them. I bought them. So something like that, something that's five, six, seven inches long, maybe not a five inch one. I, I would throw that fairly fast. Six, seven, eight nine inch swim bait something like a big giant glide bait um but my favorite way to throw a big giant spinner bait in the spring and fall is on a really slow pg reel something that i can literally slow down to a crawl on that thing another thing that i will do is i will slow my gear ratio down on stuff that I know I fish too fast. For example, if I'm throwing a crankbait in 1.5 and it's fairly slow, uh, fairly you know cold weather, I might slow that down to a six gear ratio as opposed to throwing that on a high speed seven to seven and a half gear ratio. It's going to allow me uh, to fish things a lot better around cover and things like that. First couple of tournaments of the year, I step on the boat and I am amped up, man. I don't think you can drink three cups of coffee and two monsters and get amped up as much as I am. Um, it's it's just, I get there in the first 20 minutes of the day, I'm really chunking and winding, man. I was like, shoo, 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 shoo. I mean, just like the bait never even hits the water. I'm just really ripping it. So sometimes if I'm really amped up and I'm really in a big tournament and I'm fishing a power bait, something like, uh, power fishing technique like a spinner bait, a crank bait, something like that. I will go down a gear ratio on my reels just for that sake of that. Ah, oh, yeah, the five gear is good for the A rig, maybe for you, but I don't throw the A rig. I should, but I don't. I need to. I need to. My goal this year is to get the eight foot. I think it's a six power glide bait rod that imx pro makes uh they are out of stock the slx rods are pretty cool i know jacob picked up one of those the other day <laughs> i 
<laughs> hey, Randy, I'm glad you, uh, you're, you're joining us this evening. Uh, school, you know, sometimes we get... Hey, Eric, man, I appreciate it, buddy. Um, I'm, I hope you do. I miss having you in class, man. Uh, shoot me a... Uh, drop the comment below. I'll, I'll subscribe. So, five-gear ratio, something like that, is going to be a big bait. Something I want to get down there. But I do want you to understand that this is not for jig fishing, in my opinion. If I'm throwing a big one-ounce jig in 30 foot of water, I'm not going to be throwing this on a PG or a five to six gear ratio, and I'm explain that why in just a second. Um, so next, what we're going to have is a medium gear ratio. We'll say this is 6.1 to one all the way through, like, we'll just say to seven. Uh, six to seven, I'm going to go with this as a medium gear ratio. Um I use a lot of six gear ratios when I'm trying to trigger a reaction strike. Um, something that is going to be like a, you know, like a uh, 1.5 or maybe you have a 3XD, something that's a medium diver. Um, if I'm going to throw, a, you know, something like a um, Texas rig or something like that, I may throw it on a six, I usually throw them on seven, eight gear ratio. And I'll explain to you why I do that in just a second. Um, but most people find it that this is where their wheelhouse is. This is where they want to stay. They want to stay in that six gear ratio, which I understand, but there are some times where I believe going higher in the gear ratio is going to allow you to make more, more cast during the day. It's also going to let you, um, real fishing quicker. Uh, and it's also going to allow you to catch more fish during the day because of the amount of times that you cast. Uh, three eighths, half ounce spinner bait. I'm going to throw on something like this. Uh, if I'm throwing a big crankbait, but I want to really rip it, I never go past a six to gear ratio. I'm never going to, I never throw a big crankbait on a seven gear ratio. One, it will absolutely wear you out during the day. If you throw a big giant crankbait on a seven gear ratio or an eight gear ratio, you are going to be one tired puppy by the end of the day because all of that drag on that, um, you know, that type of uh, bait, especially like a 5.6 XD, something like a dredger. So there's a ton of different baits that have a lot of water drag in there. And if you're going to throw it on something like that, one, it doesn't look natural that deep. Two, you're going to have a hard time catching fish. Three, you're going to wish that you hadn't all day because you're going to feel like somebody run you over with a truck. All right, Eric, I will... Uh... Subscribe to that thing here in just uh, about an hour when I hop off here. Um, and then if you look at, um, let's see, six gear ratio, it's probably going to be about it. I will throw a lipless crankbait on a six gear ratio, but I usually throw them on a little faster gear ratio. That way I can keep them in the water column uh, that I want to. For example, if I want to keep the, the bait higher in the water column, I can do that by, by reeling it faster with a higher gear ratio. Um, now let's look at the high gear ratio and I'm going to talk about this. There's a, there's a lot of these, right? This is a seven gear ratio all the way to 10 and there's a lot there, but I feel like between seven and 10, there's a huge amount of speed there, but it can be detrimental to the way you're fishing, especially certain baits. Um, if I am throwing a bottom contact bait, whether that be a jig, whether that be a shaky head, a Texas rig, Carolina rig, um, Top water baits, uh, jerk baits, um, frogs. You know, obviously I said top water um, and frogs are obviously in the same category. But the reason that I feel like that they are needed in this time, let's look about the stuff, the bottom contact stuff like uh, big jigs and, and worms and stuff like that. If you're throwing a uh, Texas rig or a, um, a big three quarter ounce jig or something. If I throw that on a five gear ratio, I'm going to have more torque, which means I'm going to be able to get those fish out of places easier. But the amount of time it's going to take me to reel that fish in or the bait in every time, it's going to cost me casts in the long run. If you're out fishing with your buddy and you're just doing some, some fun fishing and stuff, it's not going to matter for you. You're just going to lose a couple casts throughout the day, and it's not going to be super, super detrimental to your day of fishing. However, if you're like me and you're going out there and you're going to try to win and compete, the amount of time that you can keep your bait in the strike zone is going to allow you to be more effective in catching fish 100% of the time. There is no question about it. 
if you make 700 casts a day and I make a thousand casts a day, if I'm putting my stuff where it should be, I have a better scientific advantage or mathematical advantage, not really scientific, mathematical advantage than you do to catch more fish because I've made, you know, 30% more casts than you have throughout the day. And what I mean by that is if I have, so like right now I'm throwing a, um, I have an 894 paired up with a Cronarch. Uh, and I think it's a Cronarch MGL, but it's in an XG. It's a eight gear ratio. So with the eight gear ratio, I can flip and pitch. And I really don't flip and pitch, guys. I cast my jig more than anything because around here, there's hardly any docks. Uh, speaking of which, this is a funny story. Kyle and I were bored at Chick the other day. Couldn't catch any fish. It was brutal throughout the day. They weren't biting in the midday. We pulled up to this one dock because Kyle was, uh, you know, eating and stuff. So I just like, cruised over to one of these docks, pitched a jig underneath it, made one hop and got smoked by something. I don't know what it was. If it was a bass, it was the biggest bass I've ever caught in my entire life. I set the hook. It ran about three runs and broke me off in no time. It must have me wrapped or something. But man, whatever it was, it was a giant. And I told Kyle, I was like, I know what that is. It's like, cause I never pitched a dock in my life that I know about like that. So just one of those uh, fluke deals. But if I'm pitching a jig or I'm, I'm casting a jig and I cast it and I, maybe you guys fish a jig different than I do, but let's say I'm flipping and pitching and I'm wanting to hit cover and I'm in a stump field and I'm throwing these jigs at round stumps. And if I throw it in the stump, they're hitting it in the last and the first three feet of the fall. And if they don't hit it there, they're not going to hit it at all. I've, I've, I've patterned that out throughout the day so I can make a pitch. And the amount of time that it takes me to reel that bait back into me to make another flip or pitch is going to be less time because I have a really high speed gear ratio. Now that can be detrimental. You know what I mean? So a lot of times if I set the hook on a fish and I'm really trying to crank that thing in, you can literally have a lot of force on that fish uh, and cause a lot of different things. I, I personally think the more force you put on a fish, the more apt they're going to be to want to jump. I've just seen that in my lifetime. If you set the hook, on a fish and you're really trying to rip that thing in, they want to try to jump because they really, I think this, you know, I don't have any scientific proof of this, but I feel like that they think, you know, they're just trying to get away any way possible. So they jump a lot. And what's going to happen then is, is that you have the jig that's actually going to be flopping in that fish's mouth and gives you the opportunity to lose that fish, which is not a good thing. But if I'm going to be flipping and pitching, it's going to be Bottom contact stuff, whether that be a shaky head on a spinning rod, whether that be a shaky or one of the uh, shaky vibes that we've been talking about lately. Um, these things I'm going to be wanting on a high gear, high speed gear ratio. Something I can take up a more slack in. Now, there is another option there where you don't want slack in your line, and that's the reason that you want those high speed gear ratios, like a lipless crankbait. Uh, something that is top water, whether that be a top water spook, whether that be a frog, whether that be any kind of walking bait, a popper, um, even something like a, a fluke, in my opinion, you're not going to want a ton of slack in your line. So those higher gear ratios, those seven to 10 gear ratios are going to allow you to pick up that slack and have, you don't obviously want a really tight line because that's going to change the, uh, the movement and action of your bait. But if you take a lot of that slack out of there, if something eats your bait, you're going to have a better hookup ratio because you don't have to take up a big bunch of line to set the hook. Um, that's why I'm going to be using those high speed gear ratios when it's actually, um, you know, in those circumstances. Um, some of the things that, you know, I like to keep it simple. I really do. Takahiro Mori one, one time says, if they hear, they hear. If not, they not. So, sorry, I, I apologize for the terrible Asian accent there, but uh, I like Tok, man. He's one of my favorite fishermen. He he does it, and Tok does. He uses some high speed gear ratio stuff. Um, but I like to keep it simple. I like to have the kiss method: keep it stupid simple, or keep it simple stupid, whichever way you want to go with. I'm more of the latter, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Um, and it takes me a while to figure out. So I looked at my boat the other day. Last time I checked, there was a ton of different stuff on there. Like I have gear ratios from five all the way to eight. And there is to, there's a ton of 
of stuff that is going on. I will tell you that I have some reels in my boat right now that do not match the technique that I have them paired up with. And I don't like that. Um, so that's, you guys have been seeing me sell some reels and stuff here and there. I have some more coming in. It's, it's, I'm trying to build the arsenal. We we're talking, I was talking to my buddy Dusty the other day. He fished the BFL down on Gunnersville this past weekend and he was fishing a chatterbait and he was throwing it on a Zodius rod and he called me this weekend. He's like, man, you got to help me do something with this. He's like, I love this Zodius rod, but it's not set up for this, this, you know, this technique. And that is why it's so powerful to set up the rod to your technique, but it's also just as important to have the reel paired up with the, the technique that you're going to use. So again, if you're talking about low and slow and it's not bottom contact, whether that be a really big, deep crankbait, whether that be a big spinner bait, um, a, a big um, glide bait, something like that, you're going to want a slow gear ratio, something in the five gear ratio. Um, another thing is if you look at the Corrado 300, I don't know if you guys are Shimano fans or not, but if you look at the 300, there's different gear ratios in there. And one of the things with gear ratios is that you have to understand is it takes into consideration the size of the spool. This is just a big thing of uh, Q-tips here where I've been cleaning my reels. But if you take a spool that's this big and I turn this thing five times for one crank, that's a five to one gear ratio. However, if I'm wrapping line all the way around this big giant spool, it's going to change the amount of line I'm getting in per crank. So something that has a really big thick spool on it and it's a five to one gear ratio, maybe something that's like a seven, eight, nine gear ratio in a standard spool. So that's what you're going to be looking at. The Tranks, uh, the Corrado 300, this is going to be something that has like a four gear ratio, I think. And you're thinking, wow, this is really, really slow. Uh, and it is slow compared to other things, but you're, you're not looking at that real slow speed because the spool is bigger. It's making more of a revolution um, than every time you turn that. So it, it's a slower spool turn per handle crank, but it is not slower in the amount of line that's actually dragging in. So that is a, a, a very key point that you need to understand if you're buying reels and you're buying a gear ratio, the gear ratio is not only the determining factor that you should be looking at. You should be looking at the gear ratio and also how much line per handle turn that's being brought in with that rod or that reel. And, you know, again, like I said, the Crotto 300, there's like a four gear ratio. I absolutely hated it. It was the, the worst reel I've ever had in my life. Not because the reel sucked. It's just that that thing was super, super slow. Even at the four gear ratio, it was more like that five, five and a half, but man, I was, I bought it to throw big swim baits on and I was throwing a mag draft out of, uh, Gatesville. Um, yes, it is. Corrado E man, like them a lot. Love them actually. Um, but I was throwing a big mag draft at Yatesville and I was throwing this thing and I was trying to keep it high in the water column because I was seeing fish suspended in trees. So I was trying to keep this thing high in the water column around those trees and things. And I was throwing it weedless, um, on a, um, man, I think they're called an owner beast. It's a 10 knot. It's like a half ounce 10 knot hook, uh, that I throw these things on. I, I can't remember what, I think, I think they're called the freestyle ones where you, they're not rigged. They're not pre-rigged. You have to use your own. Uh, again, the owner 10 out, I think they're called a beast, uh, but they're half ounce. They're, they're really cool. Belly weight hook. Pretty cool. But I'm throwing this thing around the timber and stuff, trying to get this thing bit. And I, for the life of me was ripping this thing, man. I was reeling with everything I had and I still couldn't keep it high as I wanted to. So I was like, Nope, it's gotta go. I'm sure it has its place. Big spinner bait, something like that. I want to keep real low and slow. Sure. Just was not for me. Hey, Michael, what's up, buddy? Yeah, so if I had to look at all of my rods and reels, and actually probably a pretty good thing to do, I would look at the, I guess I should probably do a, um, an average of my, my gear ratio speeds in my boat. I would say that I own more sevens than anything because I'm with you. I feel like I can, I feel like I can slow down easier than I can speed up with a slow reel, if that makes sense. If I had a six gear ratio, 
cranking that thing really fast would be very, very uncomfortable all day. Whereas if I had a seven gear ratio, I could actually crank that slower and get that slow speed easier than I could the other way. Lose. Don't blame me there, man. Fish what you like, fish what you love. Next one is going to be the um, mid range again. That's going to be that's where most of my stuff's at. We'll talk like six to seven. I think I think six to seven five is probably mid range or medium speed uh, gear ratio. That's where ninety percent of my power fishing techniques are going to be there. Whether that be a crankbait, something like a one point five, or a, a shallow diver, something like a medium diver, like a three XD, um, something like a uh, Spro Little John fifty. One of the MD fifties, the medium divers, um, something like a rock crawler. Uh, again, I'll throw blade baits on this. Uh, I throw jerk baits on this a lot of times, especially in the seven gear ratio, uh, because a lot of times I want to slow my jerk bait presentation down more than speed it up. And with a slower gear ratio, it actually takes more time to get that line, that line slack brought back to your reel, which can be detrimental. If you're making a, the, a twitch and as soon as you stop, that fish smacks that jerk bait, you have to make a couple cranks to get that um, that line taken up to set the hook. Now, a lot of times, guys, especially with the super, super sharp hooks that we all use today, are the fish hooking themselves immediately? Yes, I get, get that. But one of the things that I still don't understand to this day, you can throw a uh, lipless, you can throw a crankbait, you can throw whatever it is, these things have six to nine of the sharpest hooks on the planet on these things. And you could throw it and a fish will hit this thing or you'll run it into a fish or whatever. And it just absolutely just gets annihilated no matter what happens. And they don't get hooked up. That blows my mind how a fish can absolutely smoke these things and not get hooked up. However, me, on the other hand, I could look at these things. Somebody could be messing with a bait somewhere in North Carolina at this point and I'll get hooked. Because that's my luck. But a fish comes up, swipes those things, and doesn't get an opportunity to get hooked, which is crazy. One of the things that I will talk about is the high-speed gear ratio. Again, that's going to be all my bottom contact baits. Um, now, let's look at the spinning rod side of things. They do have gear ratios. There's not a ton of gear ratios available in the spinning rod, especially if you're talking about bass gear. But if you look at certain things, the different... A uh, series of reels like a 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000, 5,000, etc. There's literally hundreds of different series no matter what kind of reel you're using. But one of the things that I like about fishing a 3,000 series is that the a lot of times the, the spool is the only thing that changes between a 2,500 and a 3,000. A lot of times they have the same body. They're the same size. They're the same weight. They just have a deeper cut spool on a 3,000 to allow more line capacity. But sometimes when you jump up to that 25 to 3,000, you jump from 25 to 3,000, I meant to say, you will actually gain gear ratio. Personally, I want the fastest spinning reel that I can get. I am not. I'm a finesse fisher. When it comes to spinning reels, I'm not going to be throwing a crankbait on it. I don't throw jerk baits on it. I'm not out to foe. I'm not going to be throwing a swim bait on this thing. I'm not going to, you know, it's going to be a wacky rig, a shaky head, a Ned rig. Um, you know, there's going to be several baits that I'm going to be throwing on there, but it's not going to be something that I care how much line I'm bringing in. 90% of the things that I'll be working with there is going to be only bottom contact or finesse uh, fishing techniques. So it doesn't really matter. That's why I fish the 3000. Another thing is that there's there's two different camps of people in this world. There are people that love the paddle handle, that's me, and then there are people that hate it and they would love to have that little button reel like the 2500 or the button handle that the 2500 has. Well, that's okay. But if I had the opportunity to choose between a 2500 and a 3000, it's a 3000 for me all day every day, no questions asked, don't even think twice about. It. It just catches them, man. I've been catching some fish. Um, I love, I pour my own, obviously, with the do-it molds, but I've been picking up the one from Jesse there at Blue Rock Custom Tackle, the triple thread jig. 
I've been catching some fish on that thing, guys. Like I've been wearing them out. I'm gonna call call and order some here very soon and get some more of those things on order. Um, I've been catching the fire out of them. The black one, I've been pairing it up again with a net bait, uh, pocket slim 3.5, cutting about half of it down. I've been catching them, man. It works great. Great point there. Yeah. Uh, keeping it spooled up is also better than having it barely spooled as far as retrieval. And what he's talking about there is having a full spool. And I do agree with that 100%. Um, Another thing, though, that, that comes into consideration is this is – I had somebody comment on one of my YouTube channel videos yesterday wanting to know the difference because on I, – I, I'll die on the heel saying that the Shimano X-Sense is be, a better reel than the Stella for what I do. Stella's 749 You're looking at – X-Sense is still expensive. It's like 600 bucks. You know, so it's almost two hundred dollars cheaper, but it has a magnesium frame. It is saltwater ready. If you guys are there saltwater fishing and you want something that you can fish saltwater, but I just believe the X Sense for what I do is a better reel one hundred percent of the time. It's way lighter. It has a ton of super high end features on it. Um, you have to get it in your hands to check it out. But I will be, I will die on this hill that the X Sense is a better reel for what I do than the Stella. Now, if you're going to go out and you're going to be a professional guy and you're going to let people beat your gear up day in and day out, by all means, those Stellas are amazing. But do I believe that they are $200 more or better than the x -Sense? No way on earth. There's just no way. If you pick up a Stella and you pick up that x -Sense, the x -Sense is almost seems like it's almost half the weight. Um, again, you're looking at a magnesium body versus, you know, a Ghana body, um, through, um, the Stella, which is a, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on there, obviously, um, when the, that makes the Stella that expensive, but for that, for that price point, I'm saving the 200 extra bucks. I'll put that on a rod somewhere, uh, or another reel accents all day, every day. So, guys, that kind of breaks down gear ratios for you. Um, and, again, there's a wide variety of reel options out there. Again, most um, bait casting reels, they range from 5 gear ratio to 9 to 10. Um, and there are there's advantages and disadvantages to both. But if you guys want to know what I fish, that's it. If it's low and slow and it's not a bottom contact, I'm throwing something like a PG, something like a 5 gear ratio that's going to be Big crank baits, big swim baits, big spinner baits that I want to slow roll. Uh, stuff that is really, really, really slow, really cold water, really finessey fish. If I want to uh, just get down there and try to find them if they're staged on ledges or something like that, but I don't want to be on bottom. I want to do the PG or the five gear ratio. Um, I find, as Mike said there a minute ago, I find that most of my bait casters are in that seven gear ratio range because I feel like I can slow them down before I can actually speed up a six gear ratio. I like throwing my 1.5s, my uh, Spro Little Johns, stuff like that. It's going to be on a six, probably 6.5 to one, roughly. Uh, the Corrado 200 is probably one of my favorite reels on the planet. Um, and I know I'm, I'm just blowing up Shimano here, but that's all I own. Um, there's, there's a ton of stuff there that goes on with that. But... The eight gear ratio is going to be stuff like bottom contact, top water baits, um, some crank baits if I really want to rip it. Um, but again, you're, all my top water baits, jerk baits, stuff like that, jigs, Texas rigs, stuff that I want to bottom contact, pick up a ton of line. It's going to be on a higher speed gear ratio. And I'm sure you guys are uh, hopefully learning like I have over the past few years. And, and you know, not all gear ratios are, are created equal. And, and that's, there's a reason that they're there. You know, it's not just gimmick. It's not just money. Uh, I do believe that there are reason gear ratios are there. So guys, uh, again, I told you we're going to be a short episode tonight. We're about 45 minutes in and I appreciate you guys joining us this afternoon or this evening for to, on another line live. I appreciate it. We will be live again, same bat time, same bat channel next week. I'm hoping to have Lonnie Cochran on next week to talk about his shaky vibe and a few other things. That way we can check out what he's got going on and he can give us some more opportunities to tell us how to fish that bait. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a YouTube on my uh, there's a video on my YouTube channel 
that will allow you to go check that out. It's about four or five back now. It's called uh, so this could change the shaky head uh, game forever. Um, and it's about the, the Picasso shaky vibe. I think it's going to be pretty cool. But I did. Most people are saying in the comments that it looks like a Z-Man Willow vibe. And I've never even seen that bait until I was down at uh, Michael Neal's shop in Chick down there at Real Deal Tackle. And they had some of those Pica or some of the um, Z-Man Willow vibes. And I they're very, very daggone similar. The blade's different. Uh, the head's different. But they do are they are similar, and that's the first time I've ever seen a bait like that. So, who knows? But again, guys, I appreciate the um, you know the support. If you guys haven't went out and subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's youtube.com forward slash on another line. I'd appreciate it. I have a six thousand subscriber goal by the end of this year. I'm gonna have a lot more content coming at you guys very very soon. Tournament season starting up this weekend. Uh, I got a two-day event out on Grayson. You guys will be seeing uh, coverage of this thing mid next week. Probably Wednesday of next week, you'll see this tournament coming up. Um, I will be fishing the Casting for Kids tournament with, with my buddy JR, uh, and we're looking forward to that. Got a ton of stuff. Uh, still making up my mind whether I'm going to fish the Kentucky Bass Nation Team Tournament Trail. Um, I think we're going to do that. Um, is There's a lot of stuff going on. You guys are going to see a ton of content coming soon. So I appreciate your guys' uh, support out there. Um, and if you know a fisherman and you think they dig my content, definitely share my stuff with them on YouTube uh, because I do have a 6,000 subscriber goal by the end of this year. It's going to be a miracle if that happens, but if I can hit 5,000, I'll call that a win. So you guys know the routine. If you guys can, get out there and lean on them. We'll see you next time on another line.